Welcome friends, thank you for joining us again on this video session. Uh, greetings to you from our Hill of Blessing family of churches and we thank you that you have joined in today to watch this video. Uh, <clears throat> we have been covering the benefits of Goshen for a few weeks and in our last few sessions we covered uh, the provision in the time of famine, the fulfillment of God's covenantal promise that he made to Abraham and to Isaac and Jacob saw the fulfillment of that promise beginning to take place in the land of Goshen. We saw the benefit of resurrection life that when Jacob saw his son Joseph after all these years, it was as if he had rose from the dead. We also discussed the benefit of the goodness of God and last in our last session, we looked at God's abundant life or the God that is more than enough. I want to get straight into the, today's session from the book of Genesis chapter 48 and verse number 5. Now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Joseph comes to his father uh, Jacob, who is also referred to as Israel, and he brings his two sons to him for a blessing. And when the sons of Joseph that were born to him in Egypt, he named them according to his circumstances. His first son's name was Manasseh, and it means to cause to forget. And he wanted to forget the pain and the suffering that he had endured when he came into Egypt as a slave. He named his second son Ephraim, which means double fruitfulness. And this is because he had come into authority and power and began to see the fruit of his labor even while he was in Egypt. But these two sons were brought to Jacob the patriarch, the father of the twelve sons, and uh, he brought his sons to Jacob in Goshen for Jacob to bless them. So the background <clears throat> for this entire scenario is the location called Goshen. And we have defined on several occasions that Goshen means to stay near or to draw near, a metaphor of being close to God uh, or being intimate with God, also figuratively representing relationships that we have on the earth as uh, <clears throat> We have spiritual fathers that we need to stay near to or draw near to so that grace can be deposited into our lives. Now, what is the benefit here in the land of Goshen when the two sons of Jacob, uh, sorry, Joseph, are blessed by Jacob? Now, here he adopts the two sons of Joseph as his own sons. These sons were now adopted and placed as the sons of Jacob. And what they actually received was firstborn privileges. So when you read 1 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse number 1, now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, he was indeed the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph the sons of Israel, so that the genealogy is not listed according to the birthright. The benefit of Goshen, drawing near, staying close, is you begin to have an unfolding, a revealing, an unlocking of your understanding of what it means to carry firstborn responsibility. So, here the sons of Joseph are being placed into firstborn status. They are being adopted as sons of Jacob and given a very prestigious place of being regarded as the firstborn. When you read the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 3 to 5, the Israelites or the nation of Israel were given the privilege of adoption as well as several other privileges. Let me read it for you. For I could wish that I myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, Paul writing about his Jewish brethren, my countrymen according to the flesh, 
who are Israelites to whom to whom and this is where the privileges pertain the adoption the glory the covenants the giving of the law the service of God and the promises of whom are the fathers and from whom according to the flesh Christ came who is over all the eternally blessed God amen now Christ came through the Jewish nation but Christ is the firstborn of God he is the firstborn of all creation and we who are Gentiles who are regarded as other nations have been adopted also into the family of God because when we receive Jesus into our hearts we are the sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus the book of Genesis chapter 3 uh, sorry Galatians chapter 3 so in Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 6 the Bible also affirms that as Gentiles we have been predestined as to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself so when we draw near to God we stay near to him we now access the privilege of firstborn status Goshen is the undergirding uh, location that gives us this understanding of what it means to function as the firstborn sons of God now let me just give you some some background into this privilege among the Israelites the firstborn son possessed special privileges he succeeded his father as the head of the house he received his share of the inheritance which was a double portion Israel was the Lord's firstborn the entire nation of Israel according to Exodus 4 verse 22 was regarded as God's firstborn son and was thus entitled to these special privileges as compared to the other nations on the earth but because Jesus Christ is the firstborn in many brethren or among many brethren as Romans 8 verse 29 Colossians 1 verse 15 and Hebrews 1 verse 6 confirm for us we can see that as sons of God we also are entitled to firstborn privileges this is the benefit of Goshen it is bringing an understanding that when you draw near when you stay near when you stay close when you uh, begin to walk in intimacy with God an unfolding of your privilege as the firstborn son of God starts to become more enlightened and you receive understanding now Christ is the firstborn among many brethren and Goshen is the place where this privilege is activated now the privilege and the blessing of the firstborn is seen in several characteristics number one there is the blessing the birthright of the firstborn consisted in the first place of a double portion this was the blessing now the firstborn had what we call the birthright and the birthright was significant in that it entitled you to the double portion remember that Ephraim means double blessing or double portion now this privilege was given to the firstborn that you would have double share of the property the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 21 verse 17 the Bible records for us but he shall acknowledge the son of the unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has that means the father had to give the firstborn son a double portion of all that he has for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the firstborn is is his so <clears throat> uh, the firstborn had the right to a double portion and because he possessed the birthright he would receive this blessing and this double portion would be his now we all know the story of Elijah and Elisha and uh, many of you would have heard heard messages regarding this particular request that Elisha made from Elijah when he said to him 
let me receive a double portion of your anointing. But we have to see that from the perspective of firstborn status, that Elisha was not asking for just a double portion of the anointing. He was asking for the right to carry firstborn privilege. And as firstborn privilege, he would receive a double portion, but also the, the birthright. He would also receive the right to receive the blessing. Now, there is the birthright and there is the blessing. Remember that Jacob deceived Esau out of the blessing, but Esau gave him the birthright for a pot of stew when he came in hungry from the field. So Esau did not value his birthright. He did not understand the privilege of having the birthright. To you and I, who are firstborn sons of God, we must value our birthright, the right to represent God our Father. Now, because we receive the blessing, uh, there are certain gifts and privileges that would be given to us. Now, as sons of God, remember that you receive the executive right and the privilege to represent God the Father. This is the birthright privilege. This is seen in many instances in the Bible, and I'll just quote uh, one. When the sons of Jacob saw Joseph coming, and uh, they said to him, this dreamer is coming, and you know that they hated him because of the coat of many colors. But when they saw him coming, they all said that they want to kill him. But Reuben was the one that defended him and said that he should not be killed, and therefore they put him into a pit. Remember that Reuben carried firstborn privilege. He, in the absence of his father, he carried the headship principle and therefore he would have the right to represent his father to the rest of his brothers. It is on that basis that the rest of his brothers agreed not to kill him but to put him into the pit because of the birthright privilege that he carried. Therefore, everyone listened to him. So the first thing that we receive is the blessing and the birthright as the ones that receive firstborn status as Ephraim and Manasseh received from Jacob. The second is you receive inherited authority. The firstborn succeeded uh, the father in official authority. Remember Moses was the firstborn in his household and was sent by God with authority to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. God placed in Moses' hand uh, the rod which symbolized authority. And we who are the firstborn have also received authority through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus had all authority as the firstborn. In Matthew 28 verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. So Jesus had all the privileges of heaven and earth, and he had the capacity and influence because of inherited authority. The blessing does not flow until we understand inherited authority. Jesus had, could go into any jurisdiction and he could control it. Remember, remember even when he went into Gadara, where the demoniac was, was a ruling principality because everyone feared him in that region. But when he entered that region, because of inherited authority, everything in that region began to submit to him. Now, this is the way we need to view our own authority, the authority that we have inherited in Christ as sons who are called firstborn. This is inherited authority that we receive and it comes with such an, certain responsibility. With authority comes responsibility. The authority that we receive is not to just demonstrate power, but it is to serve and to undergird because it is the foundation 
of serving people. If we have authority, you receive the capacity and the influence to serve another. So the inherited authority that we receive in Christ is to serve. Jesus had responsibility to teach. In Matthew 7, 29, for he taught them as one having authority. He did not teach as the scribes had because they had authority that was given to them by the Jewish law and by religion. But Jesus had authority from heaven and this authority that he had gave him the right to teach. So when he taught, people were astonished at his teaching because in Luke 4 verse 32, the Bible says, for his word was with authority. So the inherited authority that you and I have received now allows us to function with our firstborn status in every jurisdiction. And when we speak, we speak with authority. As mentioned before, we serve with authority. Luke 22 verse 25 to 26. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. And Jesus said to his disciples, it should not be among you. On the contrary, he who is the greatest among you, let him be the younger and he who governs as he who serves. So he was saying to his uh, to his disciples, the kings of the Gentiles, meaning the kings of the nations and those that are on the earth, they use their authority to exercise lordship over the others. We have inherited authority to exercise influence over those that are around us to serve us because we are under the lordship of Jesus Christ. So when we uh, govern when we rule our rulership and governing comes from the perspective of servanthood Jesus took on the form of a born servant he humbled himself and took on the form of a born servant uh, giving us an understanding that as the firstborn son he came to serve in the same way the inherited authority that we receive is to serve number three when we receive the birthright, we receive respect. Now, the firstborn who inherited the birthright had great respect from his brothers. The father of the household gave the firstborn authority over his brothers, therefore they respected him. When David went into battle, when he was sent by his father, to go and see how his brothers are doing. His, his eldest brother Eliab, when he heard uh, what, Jesus, what David was saying and he spoke to him, his anger was aroused against David. And he asked him, why did you come here? And with whom have you left the few sheep? And he says, I know your pride, etc. And David said to him, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another. Now, because of the respect that he had for Eliab, he did not argue with him. He simply turned away because he knew that Eliab had the birthright privilege. When Joseph was going to be killed by his brothers, I mentioned to you that Reuben had the respect of all his brothers. And therefore, when Reuben... Uh, took Joseph out of his hands and he said, let us not kill him and shed no blood. All his brothers respected and honored his decision because he was the firstborn. Jacob showed respect for Esau, his elder brother, when he met him. In the book of Genesis chapter 33, verse number 10, and Jacob said, no, please, if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present uh, from my hand inasmuch as I have seen your face it is as if I have seen the face of God for and you were pleased with me so Jacob had respect for Esau his elder brother even though he had taken the blessing and he had taken the birthright privilege now when you read the book of Job chapter 29 verse 7 to verse 11 you will see that Job in his former days before he was under great tribulation and persecution, you would see that he had great respect amongst the community. And Job was regarded as the son of God. He was uh, the servant of God. Uh, so understand that when you read Job chapter 29, verse 7 to 11, you are seeing a man that commanded great respect. You see, 
as the sons of God, as firstborn sons of God, one of the blessings that we receive when we are in Goshen is that you will be respected. Oh, let me read Job 29 verse 7. And when I went out to the gate by the city, when I took my seat in the open square, meaning that Job was part of the eldership because elders would generally gather at the city gate to make decisions. And the young men saw me and hid. The aged arose and stood. All of them were showing respect to Job. The princes refrained from talking and put their hand on their mouth. The voices of nobles were hushed and their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard, then it, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw, then it approved me. So when people heard Job, and when they saw Job, people from all walks of life, from the young to the aged to the nobles, they were overwhelmed with Job's wisdom and they had great respect because Job was regarded as the son of God. In the same way, we as the sons of God can command respect by the way we serve and by the way we speak and by the way we handle circumstances, the young and the aged, the influential, the nobles, the princes can respect you because of the privilege that you have to represent God your father. Such respect can be commanded by firstborn sons of God because of the right to represent. So we must know that the counsel that we give, just like Job was sat at the gate in the uh, at the gate with elders, uh, people of influence and stature will respect the wisdom that proceeds from our mouths. The next point about this right that we have or this birthright privilege is that we become a pattern or a template. As firstborn sons, we become a pattern or a template just as Jesus was the pattern son. He left us a template or an example to follow. Now, templates are standards for others to follow. 1 Peter 2 verse 21 to 23, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. So Christ left a pattern of suffering and not reviling and not threatening because he was committed to the will of the Father. Christ left a pattern of living in complete obedience to the Father. In Hebrews 5 verse 8 to 9, And though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered, having been perfected. He became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Christ left a pattern of love. John 15 verse 9 to 11, As the Father loved me, I, have also, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So you can see that Christ was leaving a pattern of obedience, a pattern of love, a pattern of how to deal with suffering and persecution. And we who are firstborn sons of God are called to set standards to have patterns and templates. So the Bible has patterns for everything that we need in life. The pattern for our marriage, the pattern for relationships, the pattern for dealing with problems and circumstances, the, to judge and be judicious, the pattern for business, the pattern to handle money, and many other aspects that we deal with in life. There is a pattern in scripture or a template that we as sons of God are supposed to exemplify to others. Uh, we must be more aware that when you carry the birthright privilege, you receive this right to leave a template, to leave a pattern so others can follow. Be a pattern of good works. 
be a pattern that would uh, that would cause others to uh, to reach out to follow that pattern now as the birthright privilege you also receive headship the firstborn son became the head of the family and became responsible for maintenance of the younger sons for the widows in the family for the unmarried daughters and also as the head he succeeded to considerable amount of authority uh, over the other members so there's the headship principle so headship was given to the firstborn son in the absence of the father now we as the firstborn sons of God have been given headship by the Lord Jesus Christ he is the head he is the firstborn from the dead and as his body on the earth we are directed by his headship as we are the church of the firstborn Christ is head over all things as Ephesians chapter 2 will tell us verse 22 and verse 23 the church which is the firstborn now has headship through the Holy Spirit the church must have the mind of Christ to enforce the headship of Jesus Christ on the earth so we have the mind of Christ 1 Corinthians 2 verse 15 and 16 will tell us will tell us that but remember that the mind of Christ is not just to any individual but to the body of Christ to know his mind you have to remain in his body headship is about making decisions the firstborn had to make decisions for the family when the father was not around and when we make decisions we have to display the wisdom that God has given to us so decisions are affected by several factors and there are things that would influence our decision-making capacity but as the firstborn son of God we must ask ourselves the decision that we are making is it affecting uh, what effect sorry is it having and is it reflecting the will of the father on the earth so we see that when Ephraim and Manasseh were blessed by Israel the first thing he did was he set them and adopted them into his family as the firstborn sons in the family the same applies to us as the New Testament believer that in Christ we have been adopted into the family placed in the family of God and carry the right to represent God our Father we have the right to carry birthright privileges that means we have the blessing we have inherited authority we receive respect we receive the right to be a template to be a pattern we also have the headship upon our we have the headship because the government is upon his shoulders and we as the church are the government of God Christ head is upon our shoulders we have the mind of Christ and therefore we have the right to represent God our Father these privileges are a benefit to you and it becomes activated when you locate yourself in Goshen drawing near to God as we grow in our sonship with God from different phases from a blade to a tree to the fruit that is on the tree uh, from a seed to a herb to a tree we need to understand that this privilege of firstborn status starts to weigh down on us in terms of our representation of the kingdom of God its values its morals its ethics its integrity its righteousness its joy its peace this time that we have had where the world has been affected by the coronavirus and has put us into lockdown and quarantine has given us sufficient time to meditate on our birthright privileges and also how we should be effective representatives of the kingdom of God 
when Adam was placed in the garden, the work that he was given to do was one of deputyship, the right to represent. As you have listened to this morning's session, I hope that you would begin to have a sense of the privilege that you have as one who is called the Son of God, that you have been adopted into the family. And I say to you, draw near to God your Father. Stay near to Him. Stay near to representatives of the kingdom, those who are overseers of your soul, so that grace will be deposited into your life. Just like the woman, uh, the Shunammite woman who placed Elisha in an upper room so that grace could flow into her life. She was saved in the time of famine. The barrenness of her womb was broken. A son was raised from the dead. These are all Goshen principles of staying near. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. And you will also see all the benefits of Goshen being manifested in your life. We thank God that you have been elevated into your firstborn status, the right to represent, the privilege to manifest your inherited authority. May the Lord bless and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. Great grace to you. Till we meet again. Amen. Mm -hmm.